We've got breaking news on the Fed. Steve Leisman has the details. Hi, Steve. Hey, Morgan. Yeah, the Fed's balance sheet actually shrinking again, uh, down quite a bit by $73.8 billion to $8.59 trillion. Um, and that since last week. Uh, so maybe a little few more signs of stability in here. Barring at the Fed's discount window fell by $18.5 billion. And that is the second or sorry, the third decline in a row. Originally, after the uh, bank failure of Silicon Valley Bank, uh, banks went to the emergency discount window and they borrowed uh, in size. And the past three uh, weeks, they have reduced that total borrowing. It's still at $69.7 billion. Um, they went to the bank term funding program. That's the new facility the Fed put together. And that allowed them to, to basically give uh, paper at par uh, value, at least, and get uh, a loan on that. That actually increased. So they're definitely showing a preference for the new funding program, which seems to be a bit of a better deal for them than they are for the discount window. That went up by $14.6 billion to $79 billion. And there's that bridge loan that they gave. That's down slightly. At least it's not getting worse in terms of the total fund of $174.6 billion. So, you know, um, Morgan, I'm thinking of calling this the Fed Salad Buffet is what I'm thinking of calling it, where you can go and get all sorts of things from the Fed Salad Buffet. <laughs> and they're, they're taking, they like, they like the bank term funding program. They're taking that. Meanwhile, the Fed is kind of winnowing down the size of the buffet in general, because remember, quantitative tightening is still going on. And so the Fed's total number of treasuries went down by about $50 billion week to week. So that's where we're at. There's still some level of stress out there more than there was before the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, but it's certainly not as high as it was in the immediate weeks after it. All right, I like salad buffet better than Fed's uh, H41 report. I'm still uh, working on a name there, but that's what I got for yeah, now. Yeah, and I, t I tasked you with that uh, with that responsibility last week, so I, so I appreciate the fact that you came loaded for this. I, I'm just curious, is this, in terms of these different offerings that you have from the Fed, is this, could you call this a, a real-time case study in, in terms of what, what works for the sector if, if we do see any more fragility uh, emerge as the Fed does continue its tightening path? You know, I think that's a really good question. It, it, it seems like the Fed created a program. Maybe it had this in the works previously. It saw what the problem was. And the problem, remember, Morgan, is not a problem of collateral. The banks had plenty of collateral and plenty of good collateral. That's all a sort of post-Dodd-Frank thing of having high capital liquidity ratios, plenty of stuff. It was just had the wrong marks on it because they were out a little bit too far relative to the liquidity that was maybe needed because people got nervous about their deposits in the wake of SVB. So here's the thing. If, if you had a hole in the dike and you were saying, OK, I need to create something, I need a piece of stone to fill it, this seems like the right solution to the problem. And Jim Bullard from St. Louis was talking about today. He says he thinks that it seems to be working. It seems to be, OK, look, some of the bank stocks were, were even up today, even though they're obviously from a very low level. So it seems like on the fly, the Fed designed the right program for the specific problem that's there. And they still have the discount window. They needed this new program that said, if you have if your mark is 80, come to me and I'll fund it at 100. Um, and there won't be any loss for anywhere in the system here, um, and you'll pay an interest rate on it. Okay. Steve Leisman, thank you for bringing us that breaking news on the H41 report, a.k.a. the Fed's salad buffet. Have a good weekend.